right, welcome back from the short commercial break. And of course, we're still speaking to Dennis Masinde Onyango, a professional footballer. He's been named best African player. That was 2016, 10th best um, you know, goalkeeper in the world. That was also in 2016. He says maybe the ratings are different now over <laughs> the years because he's also grown. But of course, we're still looking at his life and his journey to becoming who he is today. So um, when we took a break, you talked about being at Moves, balancing school, you're balancing education, and you were you had already started playing with SC Villa. Mm -hmm. How long did that take? Uh, before you said uh, your parting ways, I hear that sometimes you're loaned, the other time <laughs> transfer window, that's what mm. we keep hearing. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's very difficult to balance football and, and, and school because football is, is a very demanding sport. You must focus, you must, and, and by then we, 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 we would wash our, our training kit. You have to go back home early, wash your training kit, sleep, wake up early, go to school, that's moves come back from school, go to training, go home. And, and by then, when I was in moves, my parents had moved from Zambia to Ndeje, where they stay, and it's far now, because yeah. I have to go to Nakawa and go through Kampala in town, the tax park, and then board another taxi to, to, to Ndeje, which was a very new place for me. And uh, the taxes were few, so I had to find a way of balancing school and, 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 and football. And football, yeah. Because by then it was becoming work. Uh, they would pay me some money hmm. and I would support the family, my mom, my dad, because my mom was working at Mulago Hospital by then. So you actually, even during, uh, towards graduation, you weren't even thinking about getting a job because I mean... And did I even graduate? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, tell me about the story. You didn't finish with your university. I was, I, was, I was still doing my second year at MOOPS. Mm. An opportunity came up for me to move to play professional football and that's where me and school said parted ways yes in peace <laughs> because now i had to leave uganda I, yeah and go to ethiopia because now micho micho had moved from uganda to ethiopia mm. he's, he's a professional coach there by then and he saw talent in me and he supported me so he said my boy you want to come play football in ethiopia i said that's my dream i want to play professional football mm. and that's where it all started for me to play professional football I said school wait for me school never stops I will stops. find you I will find you and school <laughs> never stops and that's why yeah. I'm also going to school right now yes. online but school never stops yeah. but football stops at one stage mm. because the body gets tired and and I said look let me pursue my career in, in in football school has helped me to play football and football has helped me to go to school so I had to find a way of letting football go a little bit so uh, School cool. go a little bit, yeah. and and I continue with my career, and I had the opportunity to go play professional football and support my family. Because Which team did you start with in Ethiopia? It, the team was called Saint George. Saint mm. George. It was a very big team in Ethiopia, and it is still a big team in Ethiopia and on, on African continent. And uh, I only stayed for one year, but in that one year, I gave my all to the team, mm. and I got recognized by other teams in South Africa, in in Egypt. I was controversial. Don't just look at me and say, Dennis just moved here and there. Yeah. But it was controversial. When I left Sports Club Villa to go to, to Ethiopia, I yeah. signed for a team in, in Tanzania first and ditched them <laughs> and came back to Uganda and left for Ethiopia. Oh. And it was controversial. And then I signed for a team in Egypt. I left them left? without even playing for them and went to South Africa. So. That's the risk I had to take to become who I am. Wouldn't those risks then affect? Weren't you um, scared they would affect your career, professionalism, that you're not a dependable person or something like that? And what caused you to keep switching every other time? You're <laughs> signing here and then you're thinking about another thing. Huh? Well, when you're young, you do not think about all those things that they will affect, affect, affect my career or hurt me in anyhow. All I wanted was to get to the next level, a better level. So I saw that Tanzania is not my level. Mm -hmm. Let me move to Ethiopia. And then when I played in Ethiopia for eight months, I saw there's another team that saw me in Egypt and said, come, and football in Egypt was massive. Mm -hmm. I went to Egypt and signed for another team called Ismaili and flew back to Ethiopia to finish my, 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 my contract. 
And then I left Ethiopia. I went to, 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 to South Africa in, okay. in Super Sport United. Yeah. Okay, that's where you started playing with Super Sport that's United. That's where my South African life started. Oh, okay. In, and in for Super how long Sport. did you stay with Super Sport before you moved to the next um, At Super State, I stayed for four years. Won three league titles, won football of the season with the club and players player of the season in, in one year. Mm. That's how competitive and aggressive it was for me to become a professional footballer. Oh, okay. And um, the journey still stayed. Did you ever think about ever getting back to, you know, your beginnings to Uganda, maybe playing with the national team? Yeah, by then I was still being called for the national team because I was very active with Super Sport. Mm. But uh, as I said, from a younger age, I was playing for the junior level. And even, I think I was one of the youngest goalkeepers to play for the Uganda Cranes. I started playing for the Uganda Cranes, I was, I think, 18 or 19 years. And uh, that's where my senior uh, career started at the national team. I was not scared of anything. Mm. All I wanted was to play football and taking risks, okay. playing for the badge with passion. Okay. And then, um, as, as, as you stayed, one thing I wanted to ask, by the way, that intrigued me. There's so many numbers on the pitch. Why did you choose to be in, in the, the goal? I think I was not good enough to play in front. I tried, I tried. I played with Sports Club Villa when I was still in Uganda, up front. But I, I was not so good. It was a lot of running, a lot of contact. <laughs> yeah. And I said, no, my, my life. Let me get to the net. Let me stay in that net and be, you know, the, in that net you, you can be a, a, a one-man superhero in one net, in that net. But you, these the other ten players have to compete. And there you compete ah. alone. You were strategic. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to be in that space alone and dominate it by myself. Okay. Yeah. So from Super Sport, which was your next club professionally? Well, I stayed at Super Sport for four years and I, then I was sold to a team called Mpumalanga Black Aces and struggled and got relegated. After winning three league titles, I got relegated. And uh, I learned a lot of lessons during my relegation because now life became very hard for me. And then... I got sold again to Mamelo de Sundowns. Wait, let, let's help a person who does not understand soccer there. When you talk about relegation, many people always hear sports pundits say that. What exactly does it mean? Like ditched, like well, suspended? Uh, <laughs> relegation <laughs> yeah. initially is uh, a team being uh, moved. Let's say you are in... I think most of the people would understand it in a school way, where you do your third term exams hmm. and you don't pass you get you stay in senior th let's say you're in imagine, senior three yeah imagine you're in senior three you're hmm. doing your third term exams hmm. to go to senior four and you don't pass hmm. you get relegated you stay in senior two, senior ah. three or they say you are not good enough to stay in senior three let's relegate you to senior two ah. to learn more so okay. that's what happened i got relegated from this from the the professional league to the junior league, okay. to the lower division league. Oh dear, yeah. how did that feel? Well, I did not go down with them. I, uh, was, I was doing my part, not good enough, but it was enough for me to move to another club which saw me and, and bought me out. That's mm. uh, some Mamelodi Sundowns. Oh, uh, so Mamelodi Sundowns got you at a point where you were relegated. Because yes. I thought when a player gets relegated, your ratings are, you know, getting down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but you see football is a team sport. So the, the entire team got relegated, but you cannot all be that bad to be relegated. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are some who are outstanding and gave their best, but because it's a team sport, you, can't, you don't win alone. And you don't get relegated alone, you don't lose alone. They saw that I have the talent to stay up and help them in the near future, and they kept me for, for, uh, for this long. And you have been from, which, which year did you join Mamelodi? 2011, I was with, Mamelodi. since 2011, I've been with Mamelodi. Till Sunday. today. Till today, yeah. Do you have an edge cap for, I know for the other footballers around maybe 35 or mm -hmm. getting towards the 40s, uh, they're maybe getting a little bit older and they're getting out. Is there a cap particularly for the net or in the net you can play as long as you still feel strong? <laughs> well, football... Just like any, any other sport, anything in life, you, you, you've got to retire at some point. But um, there's no age limit for football. As long as your body can carry you on and on and you look after yourself, 
you can still play until, I've seen players going until 41, 42, 43, but sometimes if you don't look after yourself, it's very difficult. Mm. Uh, when, when I joined Super Sport United, we were, we were taught what is called uh, uh, looking after your career than your talent. Mm. Life skills. Mm -hmm. And in life skills, you learn how to look after yourself in terms of what you eat, uh, resting, how to apply yourself to the media, how to speak to the supporters. And that includes your health and the way you look after yourself to, to, to play longer. Because sometimes it's, it's a short spell of, of, of life when you're playing football. Some play for 10 years, some play for 15 years, some play for five years if they do not look after themselves. But what I learned is that you manage your career, not your talent. Because everyone is talented. But the way you manage your, your career is very, very important and it keeps you longer in the game. So the career that includes requires, when, when, when you look after your, your career, you have to have a healthy living, look after yourself, how you train. That's why you found me training with the MPs, yeah. because I have to keep to stay fit, not to gain weight. I have to sacrifice a few things when, when I have to look after my career. I can't go out all the time. I can't just eat anything yeah. like junk, yeah. your pizzas, your, your burgers. Your commandos once in a while, not all the time. <laughs> it's a strict uh, diet. Yeah, yeah, you must have a strict diet. You must have more veggies than anything else, proteins more than anything else. So it's, it's very difficult for youngsters to stay so, so disciplined in that way. And, and that's where looking after the career and the talent comes in because now they, they are talented, so they, they are reckless. They do anything they want, but you're cutting your life short in terms of your playing career, playing time. Mm. But if you look after your career, you, you stay longer it in the game. It stays longer. Yeah, because for, I can compete with the 20-year-old. I'm 38. Mm. But I can compete with the 20-year-old and give him a run for his money. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, earlier you said you were quite a controversial player. <laughs> and uh, my melody takes you on in 2011. And then in 2013, the Holy Spirit or whoever talked to you, you moved to rivals, <laughs> beat best wits. Tell me about that decision <laughs> and then how you returned to my melody. Well, as I said, football is, is, a, is, a, is a journey which has ups and downs. Mm. And when you're not strong, you are going to let go because it comes with a lot of challenges. So when I got relegated, as I said and explained to you how relegation works, and I got relegated with, Black a or with Pumalanga Black Aces, mm. Mamelodi Sundowns bought me. And they paid a lot of money for me to join them, but they had another goalkeeper who was a South African national team player, and I had to compete with him. And by then, I never played like for two years, not playing a competitive game, just to train, get my money, go home, Two years. Two, Basically, two, two what years. we would call Katebe, you're just on Katebe. Yes, there, from 2011 again. to 2013. Just sitting ah. there, train and go home. Sometimes go to camp, but not in the, in the team. So the team loaned me out. Like, to Kwazike, go there and get more game time, then come back. Go sharpen up your sword again. Mm. Let, we want to see you playing more, because I was competing with the South African number one by then who was called Wayne Sunderland, and I was not getting game time. But I was still being called for the Uganda Cranes. So they said, go play, have more game time, and then we'll call you back. And mm. I went there and proved them wrong that I, I can still you play. You can actually still And, do. and I, I came back and fought for my position. And, and you were given, you beat the South African. I, I pushed him out. I pushed him out. I came, you know what was amazing? When I went to beat Vest, the team bought another goalkeeper who was the Zambian number one goalkeeper. When you left Mamelodi yeah. and went to Bedvest, Mamelodi still bought another? Another goalkeeper who was Zambia's number one goalkeeper and he had won the Africa Cup of Nations, Kennedy Mwine. But then I think they saw that I'm better than both of them and uh, they brought me back. And when I came back, it was about time for me to come show and them. show them who I am. <laughs> 
And there we are. I push them until now that I'm, I'm not so active with the team, but mm. I played like for seven seasons non-stop okay. as a number one.